Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and look at this row over here. This, as you guys know, this is my midway row that I'm trying to get all up and running. And you can see right now the Pac-Man is having issues right there. We'll get to that in a future episode. But this one right here is a Ms. Pac-Man. It does have still the graphical glitches that you guys saw in the last videos, but we're gonna fix that today. We're gonna install the 96M1 uh, upgrade kit, which should eliminate the daughter board and should make it perfect. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so I have the kit here. He actually wrapped it up really nice. And uh, I'm gonna open it up here. So this isn't a uh, like a multi-board or anything like that, you know, like you would see like a 16 one or something like that. This is actually runs on genuine hardware. That's the difference with it. Um, what Mike did actually, um, and thanks again, Mike, there's Northeast Mike. You've seen him on my other episodes. If not, you know, click in the description, you'll see the other episodes he worked on. He actually worked on a four in one as well. And the four in one um, was just a different board than this, had a lot more wiring, but he kind of created a little board for that and put it on there. But for this one, what he did is he kind of reverse engineered it, took it apart, um, did some research on it and figured out that um, these are the two ROMs that he needed to upgrade. He got it working. He just made sure and refloat stuff. So everything's working and it has the battery backup as well to save the high scores. So that's really cool. So this is it right here. Normally it comes with a ribbon cable that um, you'll have to kind of, since this thing is kind of stacked on the top, I believe you put this, I'm not really sure, but you put this on an area where um, there's another daughter board on top, an aux board, I think it's the SBC board, and it kind of prevents it from plugging in where you need the ribbon cable to get underneath it. But since we have that custom chip, I call it the synthetic chip from J-Rock um, that replaces that, it's really small. You can actually put this right on top of there and it doesn't interfere, so you don't need that ribbon cable that this normally would have. So it's pretty cool that you can do that. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're gonna pull the board um, and see, you know, if we can just put it on the table and just kind of upgrade this together. Okay, so we're back. So I have the Ms. Pac-Man board out here. Um, this is the aux board that comes on it. You actually don't need this to play it. Uh, you do need the processor. Um, this one already has one installed. I guess Mike must have put a, uh, looks like he put a Z80 in for me, but normally it comes blank. And there's different variations of this board. And the one I have, let me just double check to make sure everything's in there. Yeah, I'm pressing it. Um, some of them have like the older boards have this, or maybe the newer ones have this plus the ribbon cable. So the ribbon cable kind of looks like these two chips here, which is on here, but mine doesn't have that. It doesn't come with the ribbon cable. So um, not really sure. We actually weren't sure if it was gonna work right, but then because of this chip right here, I'll show you why it's gonna work. So first thing we'll do is we'll take this out right here. So normally you're gonna remove this right here and then this right here in order to get the um, two chips onto this board right here. But since I already have it in there and I don't need the ribbon cable, I'm just gonna take this whole thing off. So in my case, I'm gonna take this off right here. And actually I'll go on this side, it's easier to do. So I'm just going underneath, taking it out gently. So I'm just gonna get rid of this board completely, put it on the side. And <clears throat> because I have this board in here and I don't have the uh, serial bus controller, which is this one right here, this normally sits on there like that. So you have to take it off in order to get to it. But because I don't have the ribbon cable, if you did have the ribbon cable, you could simply just have it underneath and then uh, put the board on there. But since I don't have it, it actually lets me, has like a bonus where I don't need the ribbon cable at all. So I'll show you what I mean. So this right here, and I'm gonna take this off on the bottom. Okay. So I believe the chips go this way. So that's the way it needs to be installed where it's facing that correct way. So normally you would put this on here and you would, you can't really put it on with this at the same time. So you need a, some sort of ribbon cable to do that, or you got to figure out how to, how to balance it with these two on like that. You're not going to have to worry about that. You can actually, since we're chucking this board and putting it on the side, we have this one here instead. So it allows us luckily to put this on without a ribbon cable. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in there. Let me just make sure it's aligned. And it should, should fit on there, I think, with another 
Uh, that's what Mike was saying is you got to stack it here. So I'm going to stack it and go ahead and do that. Uh, because it can't really fit in. See how it hits that there? So let me see if I can grab one. I have one on the side over here. Okay, so I have a 40 pin right here, which I'm going to stick on here first. I'm going to make sure the notch is facing the right way, which is that way right there. So I'm just going to kind of pop this in there. I'm going to make sure I press it in the center so I don't really mess anything up. Or, you know what, let me put it on here first. So that's going to go in there. All right, so that's good to go. And let's see if I can put this on there. And that looks right, right there. Let's see if I can pop it in. There we go. And it clears it just fine. So if I were to turn it sideways, you can see that, um, let's see if I can get it in there. And it's kind of hard to see, but basically uh, there's a really, it's perfectly on there. I'm just looking at the pins to make sure it's right. So it looks good to go. So you can actually get away with putting it on there. You just put an extra socket on there to kind of lift it up. And don't have to worry about this whole mess where this gets in the way and have to deal with that. You may have to put this down first and put this on top and don't have to worry about that. So there you go. So you put another socket, it's in there. Notches are facing this way, which is what you want to do. And then the other thing you want to do is remove all of these right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's ironic because we re-socketed it, but at least we fixed the board, you know, because it worked perfectly as a Pac-Man. And someone was telling me, there was a viewer saying that the reason I had those graphical glitches could very well be that these over here needed to be re-socketed, which I never did. I might revisit that in the future, you know, to make sure um, that it's fixed correctly, but these two are not socketed, so... I'm just going to put them all to the side for now. And hopefully, if they are having issues with the sockets, this one should be fine, hopefully, and this one, it doesn't matter. Because all these here, if you had these broken theoretically, uh, these five right here, you could still take this uh, multi-kit and it would work on there no problem because it's not using these sockets at all. All the stuff is actually loaded onto this chip right here and onto this chip on the other side right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this protective stuff that Mike put on there. And thanks again. A big shout out goes to Mike, Northeast Mike. You can find him on Clob as Northeast Mike or NEACF. That's the other uh, New England Arcade Collector Forum. Um, and this looks like it faces this way because that's where the notch goes. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in this way. And this one doesn't need any kind of... Uh, socket to make it higher because it just fits right in there so that looks lined up so i'm gonna just gently press in there uh, did i get that oh. let me try again and look and see yeah, it's having a hard time getting in there i wonder if i can throw on a socket just in case because these other sockets these are a little big for these crappy sockets so i have more stuff that i could put on there so let me look and see Okay, so that have these better sockets here, dual wipe sockets. What I really should do is take that off and resolder it. <laughs> I might do that. We'll see if this works. If this has any issues, I'm going to do that. But for now, I'm going to pop this in there. It fits really good. And then I'm going to pop this onto that and see. But I have to make a mental note that I have to change it out. So now this fits in there a little better. There we go. Yeah, that popped in really good. All right. So there it is. So that's the upgrade. So um, again, you don't use these six things over here. You just completely take them out. Um, so it's four and this and this. And don't forget, like it doesn't matter. I had this in the cheat. Remember, this is a fast version of the chip and then I had the slow version as well. Um, you don't really have to worry about that because this actually has all the options for fast, slow, different mazes. It even has Pack Plus. It has Ms. Pack Plus. 
Um, it has a version of Super Pac-Man, which is just a hacked version that has the normal maze and the look of Pac-Man, but it has the playability of Super Pac-Man. So I'd like to see that and check it out. All right, so the other last thing that you gotta do is the dip switch settings. So I'm gonna kinda, that's right over here. So you take these and you have to just put them all in the off position. So I'm gonna just quickly put them all on off. The only one that you have to turn on is number six. I'm gonna leave that on. You don't have to do that actually. You can actually get in with the software. There's a way you can do that. I was seeing online. Uh, but I'm going to leave it on just so we can get to the menu just to see uh, what the settings are, how many men you have, what mazes to use, and, and stuff like that. We could take a look together. Again, I've never used this board, so I'm not really sure. Um, oh, I'll never use this kit for the upgrade, so I have no idea. But I figured multi-pack with 96 games, it should be really cool. Um, hopefully you can disable some games because I'm not really crazy about Pengo um, or the other games. I think Eyes is in there. They're great games, I just don't want them on my pack, you know, my pack uh, cabinet. You know, I'd rather have it completely 100% um, pack type games. So, okay, so let's go ahead and we'll throw this in there. Again, it's pretty simple to do. Um, so Mike tested it on his rig, he said it worked great. So, uh, you know, I may have to again resocket that underneath. But for now, let's leave it and see how it works. Okay guys, so I installed it in here. What's cool about this thing without the cable, without the ribbon cable, um, it actually snaps on there and you don't have to worry about this, you know, daughter board hanging on the side or having to mount it. It actually is really cool. It's all in there and it's good to go. So it looks like it's installed right. Um, ironically, you guys are going to laugh. When I turned all the games on, it started working again. So this thing is so temperamental. We really got to do another episode on trying to fix that because <laughs> now it's working fine. Uh, anyway, so that's it there. It's all installed. What I'm going to do now is just uh, kind of just put this up on here. I'll turn the light off so you guys can see. And we're going to turn this on together. So here we go. Let's see what happens here. There it is. Awesome. So it says 96 and 1. Um, I think from what I was reading that, um, let's see if I can get a better angle here. It actually um, defaults to this screen, so it actually can burn in unless you press a button. So uh, anyway, we're going to push both start buttons and right to pause, and then up to return to the main menu, or left to return to the game. So let's see. I'm pressing any button just to get to the menu. So this is it. And then I think to configure it, if you press the button... It should go into configuring it. Let's see. Nope. Oh, yes, it did. Okay, cool. So this is it. Let's see if we can go to... Let's see. Next game. Cheat off and on. I guess the cheat actually has the one that I showed you in previous videos where you press 1 to go through ghosts and to not die. And then 2 will go fast. So if you have this set to slow, right now it looks like it's set to fast. I'm going to set it to normal and fast. So normal is fine. Free play, we're going to leave on. Uh, bonus, we're going to put at 10,000. Oh, it's cool. It has less than 10,000, which is kind of neat. So 10K, Pac-Man, I'm going to leave it as 3. And table, I'm not really sure what that is. Oh, I see. So it's the cocktail table or upright. I'm going to put it to upright. Screen saver, I'm going to leave on. We'll see what that is. And then difficulty normal. Let's see what other things. Difficulty max, normal. Okay, let's set it to normal. Starting level, it's cool. You can change it to 256. And I believe this has the fix in there where it doesn't have that all, that scrambled up last level with the kill screen. It actually goes to the next level. Um, the other thing too is the cutscenes. I believe if it's set to fast mode, uh, he fixed it so it doesn't screw up. Like, you know, like if you have it on Pac-Man, you'll have like the ghost when he's getting all torn up. He kind of does this little wiggle, goes down and then it like messes up. This one fixes that, kind of like what you do when you're holding down the cheat. Remember when I went fast, I'd hold it down and it still behaved normally for that screen. So it's pretty cool that it does that. Um, you could set it to home use or locked. Locked is basically good for people, guests when they come over. You won't be, be able to unlock it. I think there's certain keystrokes you do in order to get it to uh, the menu yourself. We definitely do not want that. Uh, we don't want to mess with the menu and screwing things up. So I'm going to leave it 
two locked. Uh, clear, I believe I'm going to do right now. Let's try this. Yes, I'm going to hit it again. It's basically clearing the high scores because this was a previously owned kit. Um, now I'm going to go down again to the next game. So let's go to the next game. Miss Pack Plus. Cheat off. Speed. I'm going to do normal as well. I'm just going to set them all to normal and see what happens. Um, replay bonus. I want to go to 10. Two hours later. So I'm going to go ahead and everything is good to go. I'm going to go and switch that thing. I'm going to turn it off right now in the back. And what I'm going to do is just flick that dip switch six to off. That way it'll retain my settings. Okay guys, so I actually did the configuration myself, um, put everything in there. So I just turned the game on. It does retain all the settings. Um, and right now there's a couple of things you can do. You can either press two for the next board or stay here. So if you go to Ms. Pac-Man, you have Ms. Pac-Man, Ms. Pac Plus, Ms. Pac Attack. You have all these versions of Ms. Pac-Man here, which is great that it defaults to Ms. Pac-Man because it is a Ms. Pac machine. Um, if you go to Pac-Man options, what that does is it has all different kinds of Pac-Man versions. You have Valley Midway, Ms. Pac-Man, I mean Pac-Man, and then all these are just different mazes for it. What's really cool is on the bottom, you can put all mazes in sequence and it plays all of these in a row. So instead of having the same maze repeat over and over, it goes to the next one and to the next one and to the next one and so on. You could also do random. So the next option here is Pack Plus. So Pack Plus has a whole bunch of different Pack Plus options. It's the same deal. There's a midway board and then you have all the different mazes and then you have all mazes in sequence, which is really what I like to play where it just does each one as you do each level and it's really neat. Or you could just do random mazes where it picks them. Um, as each level ends, it'll pick a random maze. Uh, let me go to the next board here. And you could do, since they're all set to fast, you could do Pac-Man Slow or Pac-Man Fast. So these are just the normal games. Same thing here, Pac-Man Plus Slow, Pac-Man Plus Fast, Ms. Pac-Man Slow and Fast, and Ms. Pac-Man Plus Slow and Fast. So it has every single version on there. And in addition to that, it has a hacked version of uh, Super Pac-Man. It's not really the same, I'll show it to you in a minute. It kind of looks like uh, Super Pac, but because I have the game, I understand how the AI works, and I do all the patterns, and they don't work. So it's a little different, but it still is fun. Um, and then Eyes is uh, another game that's really cool. Mr. TNT is neat as well. Uh, Piranha is just a different, it looks like an underwater scene of uh, Pac-Man, but they changed the graphics to be a piranha, and you're being chased by these guys. And then Pac-Rabbit is a 3D version of Pac-Man. Caterpillar is kind of cool too. It has a different graphic where you're a caterpillar and it is Pac-Man, just different graphics, same sounds and everything. Pengo is Pengo, of course. You guys all know that game. And then Alien Armada is a um, Space Invaders clone. So right now, I think it's going into screensaver mode where it selects the game. I think after a while, it goes into the default game. So if we leave it on the screen, I have it set to um, go to the game by itself so it doesn't stay in that, you know, kind of like an attract mode just just a lot better so right now it's uh doing pac-man yep and these are see it just picks a random board so anyway let me get out of this i'm gonna hold both down and press left go back to the menu so let's play miss pac-man first i'll show you real quick it's the speed up version so there it is everything works great no glitches or anything So I'm really happy with this, works perfectly. So you can either hold both buttons and press right to go to the pause menu. You can press left to go back, like I just did. Or you can just do it and then you'll see it kind of move and kind of glow. That means the menu's ready, you press up and it'll take you to the menu. So Ms. Pack Plus, difference on this one is it's just like, um, uh, I guess Pac-Man Plus where it has like, uh, you know, just the regular maze and everything, but when you do get the power pellets, it does, it behaves a little differently. So I'll show you what I mean. So when I get this, you'll see, see how one guy didn't change? It'll do stuff like that randomly. Sometimes the maze will disappear um, in later levels. Let's see if I can get to that. I'm gonna finish this one really quick. What's also cool, you see that little Coke can? Um, when you get those, those are power-ups that allow you to they, they all turn invisible, but 
it kind of lets you eat them like a power pellet, but the only thing is that they're all invisible. They appear towards the end. And then again, see, that one didn't change. Sometimes they all change, sometimes they don't. <clears throat> it's all different. I'm going to continue to play so you can see how the maze turns invisible here. See if it'll happen. So right now they turn invisible. You have no idea where they are until the end. They'll start flashing. There they go. So I'm just going to... See that one didn't change? I almost got killed right there. <laughs> but then this thing will save you. That's like another power pellet, but they disappear. Yeah, I got lucky there where they all changed. Alright, so I'm going to go here. It has all the same cutscenes and everything. And you can see it's, there's no glitches or anything. It's pretty awesome. So I already love Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man, so this 96 and 1 mod add on board for this game, to me, it's ultimate. It's really awesome. I love it. See, there's the, the maze where it gets invisible. So it's a little harder. That guy killed me because he hadn't changed. But if you get that, they turn invisible as well. So each time you get the power pellet, it's like a dice roll. You don't really know what's going to happen. See, so like, didn't turn invisible there. So I'm just searching for them randomly. Oh, I got a few. Alright, I'll try to do it again so that the maze disappears. Again, it's all random. It only happens on the second level and above. Let's see if I can get it done. Yeah, there it is. I'm gonna try to memorize it here. Oh, he turned it. So yeah, it really is harder. The AI is really good as well. It's all upgraded. So I'm gonna get out of this game. Then there's Miss Pack Attack, which I'm gonna go to now, which is a version of Miss Pac-Man. It has a regular AI, but it has a different maze. So I set it to fast mode. Again, you could play this on slow, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. What I want to do is I want to try to get one of the ghosts to come up here. Usually when they come up here, they get really slow. See how they got slow at the end? There's just a little glitch up there, I guess, because the maze is different. And I want to see what happens when I finish this. I'm going to quickly finish these boards. I'm pretty sure the board changes, but I'm not positive. So again, this is Ms. Pack Attack. It's different from Ms. Pack Plus. try again. I'm trying to finish this board here. All right, let's see what it does now. Okay, so now it changes the board. So this is a completely different board. Which I think, I think this one might be in the other version. I'm not really sure. So let me uh, finish this board. I'll just get out of here. Just finish it quickly. Don't worry about points. Alright, so that's the first board. I think I gotta finish two more. the second one and now oh it changed okay so yeah this is a little hard because it makes you like zigzag a little bit like right here you gotta kind of zigzag in order to get past that 
a little tough. Oh, okay. Alright, so you get the idea with that. Um, there's also another version of Ms. Pack. Um, it's in the other section. Oh no, actually it's right here. It's no exit. And that one's super hard. You know, I don't realize how much I use the exits to slow them down. But it takes out the exits on the side. So right now I'm just going through. See, no exits. So my patterns are broken. They don't work. I can't go out the side anymore. And all it is is all the boards that you have that have exits that kind of seal it so you can't go out. So it's really tough. It's kind of easier with fast Pac-Man, but with slow Pac-Man it's really, really hard, hard. I mean, super hard. <laughs> all right, so let me get out of this. That's that game. I'm uh, going back to the menu here. And okay, so now we're gonna go, these are all the Ms. Pac games right here. Uh, then you have the Pac-Man options, which you can go here and then go to Midway Pac-Man. So when I go to that, it's the Midway Pac-Man. That's the normal one that you know of, sped up because I have the fast enabled on it. Oh, actually, no, it's slow, and I'll tell you why. This is what I was telling you about. You can set this to fast by... Actually, let me exit here. I figured this out on my own, but you can go up. You have to go to Pac-Man options. And then there's a word, there's a way, Speedy Pac-Man isn't Speedy Pac-Man, by the way. It's just the maze is called Speedy, but that's not the fast Pac-Man. So I'll actually go to the next page, keep going. Uh, keep going. And I'll keep going again. There it is. It says Pac-Man slow and Pac-Man fast. If you select Pac-Man fast. Okay. And then you exit, so I'm going to exit here. When you go to the main menu here, when you go into Pac-Man options, the first midway Pac-Man and all of these are going to be all fast. So if you select the slow one in a later menu, I guess it re retains in the memory that you pick the slow one and it makes all of these slow and fast and vice versa. I think it's a bug in the system. I really want them to all be fast at all the time. And then if I want it to be slow, I can pick the slow Pac-Man and just play the regular Pac-Man. But I guess it's good because then you can play these different mazes slow or fast. So now I'm going to select the regular midway one on that menu. And you'll see it's going to be fast now. Because it memorized the setting from before. And it works fine. But what's really cool about this is that... You'll see, I'm going to finish these boards really quickly. And... Normally there's a glitch when you use the fast Pac-Man. There's a glitch where the cutscenes are all messed up. But this actually corrects that problem, so... Alright, so that's the first board. I'll finish one more and I'll show you what I mean. Set on me. <laughs> that connector. Okay, let me come back and I'll fix it. Okay, so we're back. So I did um, just wiggle the wire and it came back. So I definitely have to repin that connector. I'll do it in a future episode. So right now we're going to go back to Pac Man options. And we're going to go ahead and do, um, let's see, Pac Man Midway. And I'll show you what I mean. How it should be fast still. Okay, that's the second one. So look at the cutscene. So normally, you would go fast and you go twice through him. And then you would go through him as well, where it would go super fast, past it, and come and appear on the other side. And the other one, which I'm about to do now... Alright, here we go. Now you'll see. So normally he'll tear. Right? And he'll kind of do like a zigzag down here because the code is all wrong. But he corrected it in this, even though it's fast. So, really awesome that he did that. So, I'm going to go ahead and exit this now. And we'll go to the menu and we'll go back to Pac Plus. So, Pac Man Plus is going to be midway. I'm going to leave it at the fast version. 
should be fast. Okay, so this is the version where they turn into little flags. This is my favorite Pac-Man version right here. See how they turn? And right now they turn in, in, invisible there. There we go. See, that guy didn't change. Really, really challenging because of that. So, you know, it's for advanced players. Kind of puts a little spin on the game. I really like the graphics too, how they change them to flags. It's kind of neat. Let's get this guy here. This time they all changed. I got lucky there. Oh, I died. <laughs> but you get the idea. So let's exit that. So I really, really wanted the Pack Plus in here. So this has it, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, let me look what else. Uh, so under Pac-Man options, uh, you can just press the Player 2 button, and it actually goes to the next page. So they have... These are based on cars. There's like some really weird... Um, if you go to Stingray, for example, it just has different mazes. See, they're all just changed and different. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to show you something. Uh, what I really like to play on these is that when I go to Pac-Man options... Uh, let me go to here. See on the bottom it says random mazes here? You can select that if you want and it'll actually go in a random maze. Each time you finish a board it'll do a random maze. Um, but all mazes in sequence is one of my favorites where when you go to it it'll actually go through every single maze. So you get to see everything, all the different styles. Oh, there's a way you can get there, I remember now. You have to actually go through the top here. There we go. So it's neat how they have all these little differences in mazes. And again, it's fast, but the cutscenes are good. They're not messed up at all. Yep, so it's another maze now. So I'm gonna kill myself here because I'm gonna see if I can uh, get my name up on the board here, which is another cool thing I like about this thing. So the kit's not perfect, but for me it is. And this is what's really cool. You could actually put your whole name in here. So I can put, you know, you press that. If you have to make a mistake, you press down to get rid of it. So I'm gonna put my whole name here. And then you put spaces at the end. And there it is. And it saves that. It saves the whole name and everything. It saves the high scores. If you play fast um, or different mazes, like um, Ms. Pac-Man, Pac-Man, whatever, it saves it individually, which is really cool. Um, I think it saves the same whether you're fast or slow, but I know for each maze it, it kind of saves a different high score for that. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, so that's that. Let me get out of here. I'm going to show you the other games now. Um, Pac Plus is just all the Pack Plus games with the same thing. You have the Midway Maze and then all the other ones. You could also do random mazes and all mazes in sequence. Uh, if I go to the next page here, it lets you play Pac-Man Slow Fast, Pac-Man Plus Slow Fast, Ms. Pac Slow Fast, Ms. Pac Plus Slow Fast, and then you have Super Pac-Man, Eyes, Mr. TNT, Piranha, and so on. Um, it's also on the main menu. If you go here, each time you hit um, the page next button, it actually goes to each different one. So I'm gonna to go to other games and see it comes to this menu where I had the slow and fast. And you can play Super Pac-Man and I'll show you this, it's kind of neat. So it's a little crop too where they cut it off so they made the maze kind of square. So these you have to put credits in, that's the only thing. For the other ones, you gotta put credits in, except for the Pac-Mans of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop a credit in here. And then you push start. This is basically a hacked version of Pac-Man. So you're eating the keys, opening up the doors, and then right now I'm gonna go and get the super. And you can hold down. This can be really fast. Yep, you can eat through the things just like in the other Pac-Man. So it is pretty challenging. It's very fun though. It's kind of a different game. Oops. So um, it does not have bonus rounds in this. I checked. I uh, played a few rounds and 
got far and it does not have bonus. But it does change the stuff around a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna be trapped here. Ooh, that was close. All right, so it goes to the next board. And the next board basically is the same thing, just with different fruits. So really cool game. If you haven't experienced um, Super Pac-Man and, and this kind of teaches you how to play, you have to open the doors in order to get to the fruit. And when you finish the fruit, um, you know, you win the game. So pretty neat. The fact that you turn big here is neat. I think that's why they made it small because this is actually the normal size Pac-Man right here because they were limited with sprites. So whoever made this is pretty cool. They did a good job, I think. So right now it's telling me it's wearing off. Now I'm small again. Yep, so that's it. So it does have the same thing where you have to enter the high score if you get on there. Um, I didn't qualify because my score was so low, but normally it does and it lets you do that. So let me uh, go to a different game here. I'm gonna go to other games and it's gonna have eyes. You've seen eyes before, it's by Rockola. It's running on this hardware. So it doesn't have any credits again for these games. So you gotta put a credit in. And I'm gonna put a um, easy coin up button on the outside. I've seen, uh, you've seen the other video where I put it on my Galaxian and it works really well. It's just a little button you put on the outside that uh, doesn't destroy the game in any way. So this is cool, you can fire with the fire button. You have to actually just shoot all these, uh, you know, all the uh, bow ties or whatever it is. If you get shot like I just did, you die. I usually wait for him to go there. It's kind of hard. Let's see if we can do it. Oh man. So I'm not the best at this game. <laughs> Let's try to finish the board here at least. Okay, so once you finish all, it goes to the next one. And it gets harder and harder. You can't, you can't go through them like Pac-Man. You have to actually shoot them. Nice. And I think if you die here, I'm gonna die now. I think it just saves a high score, like I got 119,000. Yeah, so use a joystick and select the letter. So I'm gonna put again, D, E, L, and it does save that high score because I had it before. And there it is, so I got a bonus game out of it. It's pretty cool. Um, let's exit this and we'll go into the last few that we see here. So in other games, I'm gonna do Mr. TNT. And I'm gonna put a credit in. So, whatever trail you take, it kind of erases that little fuse, so you can't go on it anymore. So it's a little confusing, but you have to get all these things without touching those guys there. So I'm kind of going around them here. There we go. So you get them all, it goes to the next board. But you get the idea, that's uh, Mr. TNT. It's really cool that I put that on here, that it's a whole different game, you know, based on the Pac-Man board set, and then it works. It's working on real hardware. It's really awesome. So I'm gonna exit this game, and we're gonna go ahead back to the menu. We'll go to other games, and we're gonna select Piranha. And Piranha is just a different version of, um, kind of like a, it's slightly different than Pac-Man but it's pretty much the same sounds and everything. So let's do one player. It just changes the sounds around. <laughs> so it looks like you're underwater, you're just kind of collecting everything. You got power pellets, obviously, you can kill them. But it's not really a maze, you're kind of underwater, in a way. Oh, just got killed. You turn to a bone, 
I think that's neat. <laughs> and then I'm gonna try to get him. It's hard because they move around a lot. And I have finished the board. I just haven't gotten the cutscenes, so I don't know how it is for the cutscenes, to be honest. You can go through the side doors here. Okay. Try to get him now. Oh, you can go down too. Did not realize you can do that. Let's try it one more time. Let's see if I can go down. Yeah, you can. It's a little faster. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. So those side doors come in handy big time. Oh, I got stuck. Yep, so that's it. So this piranha, you can uh, let me get out of here. Back to the main menu. I'm gonna go to other games and you'll see Pac Rabbit. It's kind of neat. It is kind of like a 3D version of Pac Man, different maze. That's kind of cool. See how they're all 3D looking? So I'm gonna put quarter in here. And let's go ahead. Kind of reminds me of Pac Mania a little bit because you can jump over guys. It's really hard to do, but you can. Oh, I tried jumping and it didn't work. But you get the idea. You can see I'm jumping right now here. I can jump over a power pellet. Oh. Oh. Don't know what that is, but it kills you. <laughs> I think you can survive it if you're immune here. I wonder what the cutscene looks like. I'm really curious. It's just really hard. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, uh, I tried jumping. Didn't work. So that's it. So that's that game. Uh, we can go back to the menu. And again, if you go to other games, you go to a caterpillar, it's kind of a cool one. It's just a uh, sprite changer. So it changes all the sprites for Pac-Man. And put a quarter in. Different maze as well, it looks like. But the animation is pretty slick, look at that. You like this guy, this little worm. And you can get them. Same sounds and everything. Cool when you die too, they, they actually wrap you in a web like this. <laughs> it's kind of neat. So I kind of like it, it's neat. I wish they had a fast version of this, but they don't. Um, I could change the dip switch settings, maybe, and that'll help it. I'm, I'm not really sure. But you can't access the settings, I have to mess with that. But for now, it's a cool game. I'm not really sure how the cutscene looks, like I said, because these games are super hard. Oh, it just died. And then, as far as the high score goes, I'm not really sure how that works. We'll find out in a second. Oh, okay. So now, let's see. Yeah, it just saves the high score, just like the regular Pac-Man does, so... Uh, I'm going to exit this one. Now we're going to go to other games and we'll go to Pengo. Pengo, of course, I knew was on here. It's uh, using the same hardware here. Let's see. It's by Sega and let's go ahead. I'm pretty bad at this game, so don't expect anything crazy. That should have killed them. Let's see if I can get this guy now. 
There we go, that got him this time. So if you get all three of those together, it gives you like a little bonus. I was actually really lucky. I'm gonna try to get them all together here. I don't think I can actually. Yeah, I can't because I can't push it down. Okay, so I just gotta kill him. I gotta get the last guy here. He's tough. There we go. So the sounds are a little off, but for the most part, it's a really good translation of the game for the hardware. So it's obviously bootleg. Let me go over here. I'm gonna try, oops. I was gonna try moving that over. Okay, so there's Pengo. It let's you put your name in. It does save it. You can see I saved it a few times. Now we'll go to the last game here. All right, so this other game kind of surprised me. I didn't know it was on here. Uh, that's called Alien Arm Armada. I guess it's a bootleg version of Space Invaders <laughs> that ran on this hardware. You can put a quarter in. Runs pretty good. It just has different sounds. And you, I'm using player one to fire, by the way. There will be no holes put in this control panel that don't belong there. So let's see if I can get them here. Oh, there's the UFO. There we go. died. Okay, let's try it again. The thing is, it doesn't start on the left. It starts right where you died. So it's kind of weird to get used to that. Last guy. Let's see if I can get him. Yep. Then it starts over. So it really is cool. I haven't tried how it looks. Oh, there. I just died my final thing. I guess it just saves a high score up on there, but it doesn't let you put your initials in. But it's a bonus, right? Why not? Um, I really wish, the only regret I have on this board is that I wish I could turn some of the games off. So I wish I could turn some of these uh, extras like this, Space Invaders. It's cool, but it's in a Ms. Pack cabinet. Mm, not my favorite thing, especially because I have main machines around me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but you know, you can't disable it, but whatever. There's a way, I probably don't know about it. But I'm going to go ahead and go to there. So that's it. So you have the Ms. Pack. Ms. Pack Plus, Ms. Pack Attack, and all these others here. Then you go to the Pac-Man options, which basically gets you to the other one. And then same here. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven pages worth of stuff. No, actually it's one, two, three, four pages, because this is the fourth page here. So Pac-Man options, if you go to the next one, it takes you to the, no, oh, there's a couple for each. So one, two, three, then there's four, five, six, I guess six pages worth of stuff. But still, not bad for 20 bucks and for having it repaired by Mike. Again, thanks Mike for doing this. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comments. Um, I will get my other Pac-Man boards working as well. I have a second one of these. Uh, Mike actually has one as well. So if you guys are interested in getting this board, um, he, did, he did find a way to um, resurrect the one that he has, so I'm um, sure you can contact him, you know, on the forums at NEMike, uh, you know, on the club, I guess. So just go over there and contact him. But I know there was someone asking on the last video. Um, if you were the one, just email me um, at dellsarcade at gmail.com, and I'll uh, get you in contact with him so you can buy one. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he does have an extra one, but he was repairing these and managed to, to fix it and stuff. So... Again, thanks again for subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button. Um, you can see me here on Twitter. I'm always posting stuff. If you guys already know, um, I have another cabinet for this Ms. Pac-Man. I wanted to announce it, but uh, this one's a little different where, um, you know, I'll show you pictures right now, but uh, you could see if you don't have me, uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, but you can see right here that uh, a buddy of mine, you know, I asked him, uh, you already saw him when I went to Virginia. 
That video is going to be coming out soon, by the way, where I'm talking about it. But he actually did a whole complete side on it. Looks really great. He kind of uh, it peeked through at first, but then now it's really good. And uh, we're in the process of getting the second side done. And I'll show you that in a future video. Um, but for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and put the guts of it into that other uh, machine that looks great with the original art on it, with the stenciling on it, which is really bright. And then this one here, I'm going to make the Gap Plus. Um, I actually bought the other cabinet to be a Gap Plus, but then when we looked underneath, we saw all that stuff. We said, wait a minute, we can't destroy this cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, since this one's in worse shape, I'm going to make this a Gap Plus and convert it and then make the other one that was a conversion from Ninja Gate, and we're going to change that into a Ms. Pac-Man. So I think I'm going to get rid of the prototype artwork that I had originally wanted. It's kind of a bummer, I know, I really wanted it, but, um, you know, because I have that original um, side art, I didn't want to have two Ms. Pac-Man, so, and I really want a Galaga slash Gap Plus, so I'm actually going to put a switcher in there, most likely to have both games, uh, since they have the same kind of controls. All right, I guess that's it for this episode. Thanks again for watching and hanging out while I put this in, you know, this uh, install and upgrade in. Thanks again to my buddy, uh, Northeast Mike you know, who uh, got everything done. Um, and, you know, he's just really smart and he has two of my other boards as well, which he's uh, planning to repair. So that's pretty cool. Um, I may re-socket them as well when I get them just to make sure they're bulletproof. Uh, but other than that, um, I guess keep following me, hit the like button, hit the notification icon as well, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. That's all I need. I'll make it